Uh, hi, this is Peter at the uh, 2011 Rethinking Everything Conference. I'm with uh, Quinn Eaker. Is that how you pronounce your last name? Aker. Aker. I knew I was going to get that wrong. Hi, this is Peter at the uh, 2011 uh, Rethinking Everything Conference. I'm at, uh, here with Quinn Aker. And uh, did I get it right this time? All right. <laughs> um, you've done, uh, you uh, have, uh, You've done a lot of sessions here at the conference. Uh, they all tend to see, uh, as I understand it, be focused on being uh, uh, self-realized, basically. Is that, would that be a good way to describe it? Absolutely. What's the biggest um, challenge in being self-realized, you know, in getting to self-realized? Ideas. Ideas. You mean getting past ideas? Letting go of ideas. Just being then? Right, being in presence with whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. So is it that we get wrapped up then in our, uh, uh, too wrapped up in our minds basically, in our thoughts and let that rule us? Or what's the problem here? Right. Well, the one aspect is yes, that we are within our thoughts all the time, mm -hmm. which doesn't really allow us to feel, mm -hmm. which is really the essential aspect to mm -hmm. Experience. We're thinking, not feeling. Right. And the other aspect is, is that most of the time we're having thoughts that don't really feel good. Mm -hmm. And so then that's, that's even, you know, like ideas are all limitations. All ideas are limitations. Mm -hmm. But the ones that feel really bad are even more limita limitating yeah. than the ones that feel really good. I mean, an idea that feels really good, at least it feels good, is still a limitation because you're living by this idea of what's possible, this idea of what's true, idea of what's right, idea of what's wrong, what's good, what's that, bad. That's putting a, a boundary then. Right, you're boxing in, yeah, you're yeah. quantifying, you're defining this reality, yeah. which is now limited, mm -hmm. and then you're, you're within that box. Mm -hmm. You know, you could make a new idea and change that box, yeah, but you're yeah. still within that's that box. That's usually what I do. I, I, I'll change the box, but there is still a box right. there. Yeah. Right. So what does it even look like to be beyond the box? I mean, because I, I must admit, I'm still in some box. Even if it's a changing, evolving, I can push it up, but there's a box. Well, being able to be authentic and vulnerable and real mm -hmm. and conscious and aware and responsible for what is, mm -hmm. is an essential aspect to transformation. Right? If you were to pretend to me, if you were to project, oh yeah, you know, I'm living outside of the box too, you know, blah, blah, blah. There's no hope. There's no potential for transformation because you're projecting a falsehood. Okay. You're pretending to me where you are versus where you really are. Yeah, yeah. Right? So by being real, by being authentic, mm -hmm. it gives you access to, it gives you opportunity to explore that new possibility, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is essentially what we're sort of doing right now. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, you, by, by, by being less authentic, by trying to be something, right. you're, uh, you're keeping the, the field of all possibilities from... from uh, right, and the reason why things. people try to be certain things, ideas, okay. people try to be ideas is because they have an idea of right and wrong, of good and bad, okay. of okay. supposed to, have to, should, yeah, yeah. of better, of worse, of success, of failure. Mm -hmm. Those ideas automatically influence automatically influence what we do. Because if we believe in right and wrong, if yeah, we yeah. believe in good and bad, okay. we're automatically going to feel guilty, we're automatically going to judge ourselves and everyone else who does what's bad, mm -hmm. and we're automatically going to feel guilty and judge ourselves if we're not successful, if we're failures, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? But that's just an illusion, it's just an idea that we're experiencing negative yeah. experiences from only because the idea in itself we exists. Put a, we put a value on it, you know, we've crossed that line, we're, you know, now you're doing ba something bad here. Right, so the experience yeah. is real. Mm -hmm. You're experiencing feeling bad because of that idea, yeah, but it's only yeah. the idea that's creating that feeling bad to begin with. And so as that idea disappears, you're actually liberated from the experience of that feeling bad, and then all of a sudden you're just sitting in presence. Mm -hmm. You're just breathing right now, you're just breathing right now, and everything just is. Everything just is, everything just is. It's only ideas that make anything something. So it's about, that's basically living in the moment more. Right. Uh, 
how do you uh, make decisions then? You know, most people, you know, have some, right. yeah, some, there we go, yeah, right. have some, uh, some framework they're working from, just so they can figure out how to, how to act. Right, so so how do yeah how do you deal with that? A framework in a, in a, in an essence still exists. Okay. So when we begin to explore the new paradigm, which is what I call, you know, this empowered, realized level of experience, is letting go of all ideas, all attachment, all expectation, okay. and choosing to devote life to make life about feeling good. Okay. So. The Basically, the, the values are, are that's good. good. The only value is either Drive feeling, good feeling good or feeling bad. You either feel good or you feel bad or somewhere in between. So if life is based on a spectrum, a scale of 0 to 10, you're feeling either a 0 or a 10 or somewhere in between. And anything that feels less than where you are, anything that feels like yeah, a downgrade, yeah. you don't even pay attention to it. What? You don't give it any power. You don't acknowledge it in any way yeah. because you're already feeling better than that reality. It's like, see, people judge me all the time. People are judging me all the time. Of course, yeah. But I don't meet them in that judgment. I look, and I perceive, and I feel, and I meet them where I am. Yeah. In their space of judgment from my space of liberation, I don't judge them back, because if yeah. I judge them back, I meet them where they are, and then I drop. Okay. I yeah, feel, yeah. judgment never feels good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so rather than judge, I laugh. I'm like, if you had any idea what was really going on, not only would you not be judging me, Finish your thought. <laughs> not only would you not be judging me, but you'd see why I'm laughing. Because I'm choosing, I'm consciously aligning with feeling good for the yeah, sake yeah. of feeling good. Yeah. That's it. Because feeling good feels good. It doesn't matter where you are, what you have, what you are doing, who you're with. You either feel good or you feel bad. And if you feel really good, everything is good. If you feel bad, everything is always bad. Well, I guess two questions that come to my mind, though, about that is, first of all, what's the relationship to other people? The things that might feel good to me might not be so good for other people. So right. how do you deal with that, first right. of all? So see, this is, a great, this is a great example because if I were to care what other people felt, yeah, yeah. right, then I would be affected by that judgment. True, true. So the only way I'm able to be liberated from that is to have no attachment to anyone else's perspective. Yeah, well, but what about, uh, so, but if you're focusing I hear you about not letting that get to you, letting the dogs just bark and mm -hmm. not caring. But what about the uh, when feeling good is negatively affecting other people? I mean, maybe that's okay. I'm not. I'm, I don't well, know. That's absolutely you're... okay because see, here's the thing: is everything is energy, okay. and it's all in alignment. Okay. Right. So see, here's the reality: is just like no one, no one can make me feel bad. I either feel bad, and you bring that out within me, or I feel good, and no matter what you do. No matter how much you hate me, no matter how much you judge me, no matter how much you love, no matter how much you laugh at me, no matter how much you try to make fun of me, yeah. no matter how much you try to manipulate me, I'm still just looking and I'm feeling consciously, presently, empoweredly, yeah. and allowing you to be wherever you are, and I'm being exactly where I am. See, now if everyone were like that, I couldn't ever make you feel bad. I couldn't make you feel bad. Yeah, I can only can... make you feel bad if you're already yeah, disempowered. In words, though, but what about in actions? What if making you feel good, you know, you you. By doing what you do, you're, you're not just mentally making someone feel bad. What if your actions are, are detrimental to someone else? You know, which can happen if you're only focusing on... Well, and my favorite example is the woman who gets beat. Okay, keep going. It's no chance. It's no bad luck that the woman who gets beat leaves a man, and the next man she's with beats her as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So... It's in alignment. If Everything do, is always so in alignment. So if you do something that's not uh, kosher with someone else, it's then their responsibility. Absolutely. To say, mm, not cool. Not Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. Responsibility and freedom. It's all in the individual. It's not. It doesn't. Uh, you're not watching out for them. They should watch out for them. Absolutely. What about the case of people who? Uh, and some of this is devil's advocate. But what about the case of people who can't uh, effectively advocate for themselves? Then what? Well, you know, me myself. I'm not here to take advantage of people. Yeah. I'm but, not here but, to manipulate people. That's sure, too easy sure. for me. Yeah, yeah, sure. But you still, if you're following, if you're fo if everyone's taking care of themselves in a sense, mm -hmm. there still is the opportunity for you to, if you're not watching out for them because they're supposed to, what if they don't do a good job of it? Then you might actually do ill to others. So, But they're already having ill done to them all the time anyways. Okay. It's no different. Okay. I mean, 
So if you can't take your, care of yourself, I'm sorry. Is, is it that basically? Well, everything's always in alignment, and good and bad doesn't exist. Yeah. Right or wrong doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Unless it does. But if it does, it's not because it's some divine rule. It's because you believe, you hold on to, you give that idea power, mm -hmm. and therefore it exists within your experience for you. Go through that one one more time for me. Can you say that another way? Right and wrong, good and bad, mm -hmm. they're all ideas. Mm -hmm. right? sure. So we can experience the truth of them. Right and wrong, good and bad, they can't exist. They totally exist, they're totally true. But see, here's the thing, is that everything, everything is actually true. The reality is, is that in Hitler's mind, he was the greatest person on earth. Yeah, yeah. Right? My justification God. is the same for everybody. It's on a different scale, but justification is justification. Mm -hmm. Ideas are ideas, and what we believe is true. Always. And so it's not about what's true or false. It's not about what's good or bad. It's not about what's right or wrong. All it really is about is what feels good and what feels bad because that's actually dictating everything. It doesn't matter how much you have. If you feel bad, it all sucks. If you feel really good, the same thing is true. It doesn't matter how much you have. It's all good. Yeah. And see, in the new paradigm, life is extremely simple. Okay. It's extremely yeah, abundant, is... extremely enjoyable, and if it's not, yeah. it's only because of disconnection to that truth. Because it's just as true as a complex, difficult life of lack. Neither one is right or wrong, or good or bad, or true or false. They're both true. They're both right, they're both wrong. Everything just is. The question is... is well, is everything relative, though? It sounds everything like that's... relative. Okay. That's the, that's the thesis. Okay. Um, everything is relative, and everything is in alignment. Remembering that everything is alignment. Tell me is about actually, alignment. That word you've used several times. Can right. you define it real quickly for me? What right, is so alignment? When I say alignment, most people believe that that means good. They translate that as good. Okay. It's in alignment. Oh, that's good. It's just what should be. Is that what you're meaning by it? No. Alignment is what is. Everything is always in alignment. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Everything. Okay. Whether it feels good or whether it feels bad. Yeah. Whether it's up, whether it's down, whether it's dark, gonna, whether it's light. We're going to, uh, this body is going to perish at some point and that's the way it should be. That, is that in alignment then? Or is that what you mean by it? Unless it's not. The body doesn't actually have to perish. That's an interesting theory. Right. Now, most people aren't willing to even consider that as a reality truth. But see, here's the other thing that I've realized and I've witnessed is that I've never met someone who hasn't already decided they're going to die. Mm -hmm. They haven't already decided they're going to age. Well, have we met anybody who hasn't died, though? What does that even look like? Well, you can't meet anyone if you don't even believe it's possible. Because, see, everything already exists. But like, let's say you do believe it's possible. I mean, you're saying you're we're just not seeing it? Absolutely. Interesting. Because the reality is, is that if you spend five minutes on Google, you can find multiple websites, hundreds of articles that will showcase, will share mm -hmm. easy, cheap, natural, enjoyable cures for cancer mm -hmm. with high, high, high success rates, 90% yeah. success rates, right? And yet there's a million people in the world every year, more than that, dying from cancer. Mm -hmm. They have no access to that truth. Why? Because they're not in alignment with it. They can't heal because they're not in alignment with healing. They're in alignment with death, they're in alignment with disease, they're in alignment with sickness, they're in alignment with suffering, and therefore, the only information they have access to is in alignment with that. So guess what? The only information they have access to is the Western medical approach of chemotherapy, which is extremely painful, extremely expensive. It's in alignment with every aspect of their suffering. Whereas if, whereas if you get cancer and it inspires you to really want to live, and you're like, oh my God, I just realized for the first time in my life I want to be alive, that being alive is really worthwhile. I am going to choose life. All of a sudden, a whole new spectrum of possibility exists that never existed for you before, but always existed. And all of a sudden, you meet the person, you read the book, you find the article online that changes your whole life forever. It's always been there, yet you never knew it was there because you were never ready.